Hi, I'm Coach Quir Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be how to deal with my girlfriend's quick changing moods. Well, I've got an email here from a guy, and obviously he's following what I teach in my book, 3% Man. And sometimes his girlfriend's in a good mood, she's happy, other times she's kind of grumpy. And so he seems to be doing a decent job of understanding when she just wants him to listen and when she wants his advice or his opinion. But he kind of feels like sometimes he should just be more stoic because it's obvious he's, he, you know, this is something that's probably new to him and sometimes he, she's just in a bad mood. I mean, as human beings, we all occasionally... We just get grumpy. We're we're in a bad mood or whatever. It has nothing to do with the other person, and so it sounds like he's kind of taking everything personally, based on what her moods are. So he brings up some good points. So I thought I'd go through his email because I know this is you know especially for you guys that are in long term relationships, you're you're gonna have women. There's some women are very emotional, very bitchy, very feminine, very difficult to get along with, and others are more kind of even keeled. And they may be moody, they may have ups and downs, but when they're upset, you can talk to them and get them to open up and they'll tell you what's bothering them. So me personally, that's the kind of women I like. As I, you know, remember, no drama allowed. I All my closest friends, all the girlfriends that I, you know, the ones I've written about in 3% Man, the best ones I've had over the years, and the people I spend most of my time with are pretty even keeled. I don't like drama. I don't want to put up a drama. I don't like bitchy, grumpy people that are moody. I just, I don't want to deal with that shit, you know, especially at 51 years old. The older you get, the more you want to put up with that kind of crap. But I understand. I know lots of guys that are in, that follow me or in relationships with women that tend to be a little bit more on the bitchy scale and a little bring a little bit more drama and, you know, they like to mix things up a little bit. I've got a friend of mine he's pretty relaxed and even keeled but his girlfriend can just be a in his words a miserable bitch at times and because he's so even keeled she always apologizes after the fact but i know it grates on his nerves it's some sometimes because he's he likes likes the he likes to have drama free life like i do but his girlfriend is just going to bring some drama occasionally. But they're able to work through things. She's, she doesn't play games with them and jerk them around and tell them nothing's wrong when she's really upset with them. She'll come out with it or if she's in a really bad mood, he'll just leave her alone because he, he doesn't care. He's going to do it his way. He's not If she's going to be upset and she's determined to be in a bad mood, he's not going to put himself into a bad mood because she's in a bad mood. He's just going to go off and do something else and eventually when she calms down she'll come and apologize for being such a bitch to him which is ideally what you want me personally i wouldn't i wouldn't date her i wouldn't put up with that but that's me and that's the good news is that different strokes for different folks you get to date the kind of women you want to be around the women that are nice to you one of the first things i always say when i enter when i meet a girl for the first time is i always say i want a girl's nice to me and I just don't put up with drama. I don't put up with bitchiness. I don't put up with girls that don't communicate. It's just, and you know, it limits your options because very few women grew up in a good family where they kind of learned to exercise emotional self-control when it came to their emotions and talk through and work things out. And it's the same thing with all my guy friends. All my guy friends are like that. My best and my closest guy friends, I don't think we have, that I can think of in all the decades we've known each other, that we've ever really gotten upset and yelled at each other or really had a disagreement. We always just talk through things. There's just never any drama. And that's why they've they've stood the test of time because I just, life is difficult enough without people that are constantly getting upset and bringing drama in your life or they're difficult to get along with. I personally don't want to put up, but I know plenty of other guys, they like that. They like to mix it up a little bit. They like a little drama, but I'm not like that. So I got a quote that I wrote, and then we'll go through the email. And the quote says, Women come in all kinds of different emotional intensities. Some women are very feminine and girly, but very bitchy, grumpy, and moody. Others are more laid back, don't take things personally, look for reasons to laugh, and assume the best, and will generally tell you what's bothering them if you ask. Then there are other women who are overly emotional, jealous, insecure, 
and simply too toxic to be around for an extended period of time. They are difficult, passive aggressive, and play games instead of being straight with you so you can easily work out your differences. The reality is women can make it easy to talk through things and work things out or they can be extremely difficult. The beauty is it's your choice. You get to choose what you want to put up with or not. I choose to pass on that stuff. This is why it's essential to set and enforce healthy boundaries. The reality is that women who are easier to get along with and who have a great attitude are going to be much easier to be around and live with in long term in a long term relationship than difficult, grumpy, bad communicators. And I've dated women that are bad communicators and they're grumpy and they're moody and when they're not when they're in a crummy mood and you're like, babe, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. I don't want to talk about it. And they really don't. They become nasty the more you dig. And they're just if you you know, when I, like one girlfriend in particular, it just seemed like ninety percent of the time she was just in a crappy mood. And it's like, I'm I'm not gonna deal with that for extended periods of time. That's why I didn't stay with her that long. But I got to experience what it's like, and I know that I didn't like that flavor, if you will. It's not for me. Choose wisely because 95% of your happiness or misery will come from the people you choose to spend your time with. So let's go through his email. He says, hey, coach, my girl went from laughing crazily and having such a great time with me yesterday to a concerned face with a kind of cold attitude. I questioned her about, well, the other thing you gotta remember, and I talk about this in 3% Man, is women's emotions are all over the place, just like mother nature. You can have a beautiful, especially living in Florida, where the sky could be totally clear, 15 minutes later, clouds rolling, it storms, thunder, lightning, 20 minutes later, the sky is completely clear again. That's just the way it is, and it's a good metaphor for how emotional energy flows through the average woman. So you got to think of women and their emotional storms. I actually wrote about this in my book, a chapter of it. It's kind of like Mother Nature. Don't take it personally. It's just remember, we all project what's inside of us. No one will ever do or say anything to you that isn't a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves in a moment. And no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. So if you're not setting and enforcing healthy boundaries, you're basically telling her it's okay to be a jerk to you, to bring drama, to be nasty. And if you put up with it, you invite more of it. And that's why it's so important, especially in the beginning, that you set and enforce healthy boundaries. And when you come across these these women that are just overly emotional and difficult to get along with, It's usually not until after three or four months of dating that you really start to see, wow, they're like this a lot. And I don't like it. So back to his email. He says, I questioned her about that. We got into a discussion of something that happened two days ago. She said she was feeling bad that she wasn't in the mood for sex. He says, we came together two times this very same day at the best sex ever and we went wild, and then the turnoff happened in that night. The other thing is some women, when things are going real well, they'll just screw shit up, or they'll cause some drama just to see how you handle it. That's life, man. Don't complain to me. that I didn't make them that way. That's just, they are like that. Some of them, not all of them. He says, I questioned her, and she said that she was afraid that I was disappointed in her. Asked me how... Did I feel about what happened and that hurting me is a nightmare to her? Well, obviously, she cares about you, so that's a good sign. I just told her to come to me. She was a bit reluctant, but she eventually came. I put my forehead against hers, held her hand, and told her things to make her feel loved and cared for. So it's potential, potentially possible, that maybe she didn't get enough strokes as a kid. She didn't get enough I love you's from her parents. And so she tends to hold back because she never really got to express those things. And so she's holding back because she's afraid that maybe you can't handle it or don't want to handle it, probably like whoever the father figure was in her family. It's so important how kids grow up. That's why you got to have, ideally, in a perfect world, 
A strong masculine presence and a strong feminine presence. Helps the kids be balanced out. Eventually, she started kissing me while I was doing it, and then we got playful again. This is the first time I tried that instead of over-listening and over-asking with a therapist face. Yeah, I definitely have seen over the years, sometimes guys take what I talk about in my book. Like every time a woman just doesn't seem to be very open, very forthcoming, is like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he keeps digging, thinking that there's got to be a problem when maybe she's... She's in a bad mood or she's thinking about something. So it's like you don't want to get into the point where it's overly robotic because then then she's going to feel like you're being a robot. You're not really authentic. You're just using a technique or a strategy. And so this is the kind of thing that's an art. It's something that you have to do and you have to get in the middle of and experience it to get good at it. And that's why it's so important to do a good job up front of pre-qualifying the women that you date and later get in relationships with. Because if you get into a relationship with somebody who's very difficult and not a good communicator, down the road it's going to be very hard to get along with them. And they'll make it hard for you on purpose just because that's what they learned in their family growing up. So he says sometimes he even tries to fix her problems. So the always the good thing to always remember about that is if you're trying to give advice and she hasn't said she specifically she needs your advice, always ask. Do you want my advice or do you just want me to listen? Like if she's venting about something, wants to tell you about something that happened at work or happened with her sisters or her family or one of her girlfriends or whatever it happens to be, ask her if you're not sure instead of offering unsolicited advice. Because if you offer unsolicited advice and she just wants you to listen and help her talk through her problems, she's going to say, you're not listening to me. And you're like, what are you talking about? I'm right here. I'm, of course I'm listening. But if you're trying to give her advice when she just wants you to go, really, what else? Tell me more. No way. What else? What, ha- what I have next? Oh, my God. She just wants you to talk and, or to facilitate her talking. So that's why you'll get that you're not listening to me. And you're like, what are you talking about? I'm right here. I'm, of course I'm listening to you. It's like, no, you're trying to solve her problem instead of listening. So in her mind... If you're not getting her to just talk for the sake of talking and working, because remember, women, as I talk about 3% man, they solve their problems by talking about them. And you facilitate that. If you've ever watched a group of women together talk and they're, they're, they're sharing, they're talking, they're acknowledging one another and just hearing each other out. They're not trying to fix anything. And so it's also helpful to become a good observer of watching other women interact and talk and communicate. And you'll see 10 different conversation threads going on between four or five of them. And it won't make any sense because they're all over the place. He says, and I was amazed at how well it worked. So remember, love is playful and fun. It's always because as the man, you're always going to set the tone. And I do this a lot in phone sessions I have with guys that are kind of struggling with this. You know, because they take it personally. If she's in a bad mood, as us guys, we're driven to be successful. So if our girl's in a bad mood, oh, it must be something we did. And then we identify it. And then we want, we want to fix it. We want to get back to where things are. But don't take everything personally. Oftentimes it has nothing to do with you. And that's why it's helpful to be playful and a teaser and mess. Oh, you're in a good mood today. I love it when you talk to me like that. I love it when you talk dirty like that. I think you should fuck me like you hate me. Be playful. Take the stick out of your butt. Smile. Joke around. Go with the flow a little bit. Diffuse with humor. It's like, okay, what's 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 wrong, honey? Obviously, you're you're bothered about something. Tell me what's going on. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? If the obviously if the humor ain't working, you gotta remember some people are just determined to be in a crappy mood, and it's not your fault. That's just the way they were raised, and that's the way they are. The key is, are you able to interact with them in a way to work through your differences? Or do they make it unnecessarily difficult? The more dysfunctional their upbringing was, if, especially if the dad was missing or they didn't have a good relationship with the dad, it's very difficult to get along with those women because there was no masculine presence to calm them down and help them work through things and talk through things. That's important. It's the same thing with boys. Boys that are raised in single you know, mom households with no dad around Nobody taught them how to keep their emotions in check and not lose their shit and get in fights and cause problems. Men can calm kids down in a way that women can't. That's just reality. That's what masculinity brings to the table. 
He says, I feel like I'm losing power and becoming uncentered when it happens. And then sometimes I should just pretend that there isn't a problem because I feel that this is a way of her testing me. That's why it's important before you go into, as you put it, therapist mode, is to think about if you're the man, if you're the king of your kingdom, you're going to set the tone of playfulness and humor and being silly and not taking things silly. But if she's upset and she's like, why are, you, why are you always joking around? Are you not taking this seriously? I was like, wow, okay. So you're upset about something? Well, why don't you tell me what you're upset about? And then I'll understand it. And by the way, you're kind of cute when you're angry. In other words, it's like I'm going to throw a little humor in. And it's like I'm not going to be deterred from being in a good mood. Like my buddy that I was telling you about earlier that has a really, you know, girlfriend who's very moody and very bitchy. And she can get real nasty. And he'll laugh at her sometimes when she's that way. And if she's determined to be in a grumpy mood, it's like he's decided ahead of time he's going to be happy. And so he just goes off and, and does other things. Then, you know, a few hours later, she'll come to him and apologize. And she'll literally say, I'm sorry for being such a bitch earlier. I was just in a bad mood. And then she'll tell him what was really bothering her. So in other words, he's there to, to find out what's going on if she wants to talk about it but as soon as she's abusive or in a bad mood he's like oh she's in one of her moods that's okay because i got other things i'd love to do and he'll go and do those other things and he won't be bothered at all by the fact that she's upset and then she comes to him a few hours later he's like you didn't even care and he's like babe I, I asked and you determined to be in a bad mood and i'm having a great day i'm going to continue to have a great day and if you want to be a sourpuss i'm gonna let you be a sourpuss in the kitchen while i go play in the garage of my tools or whatever and i love the fact that because you know having friends like that because i learned from him as well because i see how that vibe and that inner that energy is and i got another friend he's been with his, his wife many decades now they got a beautiful family together and she gets kind of bitchy and moody and you know he's always wants to have a good time he's like me no drama allowed so his attitude is always he'll try to get her to talk and if she's just in a bad mood he'll laugh it off and go off and do something else and later on same thing she'll come to him and apologize and then she'll tell him what's really going on but he's just not going to sit there and if she's determined to be in a mad bad mood sit there and put up with it he's like he'll go have a drink with friends or whatever or do something fun he's just not gonna because again if you're driving the fun bus You've decided ahead of time that you're going to be happy and you're looking for reasons and occasions to be happy and to laugh instead of going through life looking for occasions to be offended because a lot of people are like that. They look for reasons to get offended and then they want everybody else around them to get offended. That's how they fulfill their need for love and connection, obviously in a very dysfunctional way. It's like they want to bring everybody down to their level. If they can get everybody else upset like them, then that validates their attitude and their mood and the way they're showing up. And so that's why it's important to know who you are, what you want, why you want it. And if your life is a drama-free zone, if there's something bothering your girl, ask her if she still is nasty. Tease her, make fun of her. If that still doesn't work, then be a little more stoic. Go off and do your own thing. Say, oh, obviously, she's in a shitty mood. She can apologize to me later. And that should be the attitude that you want to have towards. That's the it's a superior way. I'll always go with the flow, diffuse the humor. And then if she's still upset, try to dig a little deeper, see if she's willing to talk about it. If you encounter a lot of resistance, then go do something else and let her calm down. And then maybe a few hours later or maybe a day or so later, if you, you're you not actually living together 24-7, then she can call you and tell you what's going on and recognize that. Because what will happen is she'll realize that her bitchy mood pushed you away. And you haven't talked in a day or two, then she'll recognize that oh, I was such a bitch to him because the mood will pass, and then she'll calm down, and then she'll a normal woman. We're we're assuming that this is normal, healthy, not a lunatic, a toxic person that you shouldn't have in your life. So if you haven't read Three Percent Man, it's available for free at understandrelationships.com. You can also read Mastering Yourself for free there as well. All you do is subscribe to the email newsletter. And if you're having a challenge or a situation you'd like to get my help with, go to understandrelationships.com. Click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly. And obviously get one of these nice no drama allowed mugs to remind yourself, especially if you have a, a moody girl in your life or maybe you got moody people. Maybe your mom is moody or your sister is. Like, babe, remember, 
No drama allowed. These are available at Teespring, the Coach Corey Wayne store. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.